Welcome to Worship Edge Hill. This is January 17th, 2021, if you can believe it. We are celebrating Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday today in this service, as well as tomorrow on official MLK Day. The service includes a wonderful litany to Dr. King, and I have the pleasure of doing the litany together with Janice Key, longtime Edge Hill Connections, her with her entire family. Um, she is was working at the free store this morning, and she graciously agreed to help with our service. Um, also, I feel I wanted to give an update on the anti-racism class titled Becoming an Anti-Racist. It's been phenomenal. Bonnie Johnson and Susie Johnson have been co-facilitating. The conversations have been very grounded based on people's experiences, helping each other become more effective anti-racists. It's easy to say I am completely against racism, but not know how to live our lives in ways that is actually anti-racist. And this class helps. It helps identify areas where people can engage in systems or engage in the midst of acts of racism and, and, and be a source for reconciliation and, and change. Um, so I am immensely grateful for John, Bonnie Johnson's um, willingness to organize this and coordinate it and, and to keep it going. Um, it's not too late to join us. We've had over 40 people register and 32 to 35 on each of the first two classes that we've had. There are four more classes, so join us. With that, let's worship together in the spirit of hope, love, and joy. Amen. Good morning, I'm Woodley McEachern, and let us join together in worship and respond to this call to worship. God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defender of all for whom there is no room. 
Amen. Please join me. Let us pray together. God of all creation, we come with grateful hearts that you have envisioned a universe that reflects your magnificent glory. When we look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, who are we by comparison? Yet you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And so we gather not only as your created beings, but as your covenant people. We are loved by you and called by you. Thank you for the living presence of Jesus Christ, who transforms our human attempts at prayer and praise into divine worship that pleases you. Thank you for your spirit who empowers our worship. We give you glory for who you are, creator, redeemer, and Holy Spirit, and for all that you have done and are still doing. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the very fullest. Glory to God. We are a forgiven and liberated people. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to all.
Let us pray. If God calls you, you shall say, Speak, Holy One, for your servant is listening. We know that every great hero is just the tip of an iceberg. Few of us are called to be that tip, but all of us are called to participate. You call us to be part of the iceberg that lifts up the tip that changes the world. The hero is not the powerful one. The movement is the power. The people are the power. The leader simply asks us to do our part. You created us to work together, leaning toward the same dream. You choose and call who, we, who will become the leaders, but you call us all to be part of the movement, trusting that our small part is not small at all. We may be an even greater inspiration to our neighbor without even knowing. To be Martin Luther King Jr. is not our choice, but to be in the march with him is. Help us choose to follow. Amen. Yes. Please join me in the song. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my Our reading for today is 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so they could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. 
Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On this day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. So Samuel told Eli everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. And the Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Samuel's story is one of those wonderful stories that preachers, teachers, and church people really like because it reminds us once more that God continues to seek us out as we live our journey on this earth. God is always reaching out to humanity as individuals and as communities, and even as the entire family that humanity is. And I think that's what makes today's story so powerful is that at first, Samuel doesn't recognize God's voice that he's hearing. And he turns to Eli for help, identifying and interpreting what he's heard. It requires listening and trust from both of them. In the bigger picture, this is a story about the changing of the guard. It's a story about an old priest, Eli, who had spent his entire life in faithful service to the Lord, but during his entire journey, he never actually heard God speak directly to him, not even once. But when the younger Samuel heard this unexpected message, Eli had the wisdom, wisdom to recognize that Samuel had just experienced God's call. And he had the faithfulness to guide Samuel on how he should respond. Remember, this entire time, that much like the 45th president of the United States, Eli is on his way out. And very unlike number 45, he does nothing but support and nurture his Samuel along the way. His role in the story is important because it reminds us all about the role other people have in helping us identify and answer God's call in our lives and our role in helping other people answer their call. It reminds us that we need each other. We need our community connected, sharing, and working together in order to best recognize and support our shared gifts and communal calling. That's how God has always used communities of faith to make our society and our world a better place. And even the bigger picture, it's here in Israel's story that they started a dramatic change from being a nation ruled by judges to becoming a nation led by a series of kings. Of course, living under a monarch sounds strange to us, of course, because we know the United States is a representative democracy. And by definition, a democracy is dependent on the voices of its people. The very act of listening intently and actively is an, of immeasurable value in a democracy. It's a form of government 
that is meant to be written by the people and for the people. So whenever leaders stop listening to the people, democracy fails. Here's how I see it and how it connects to today's reading. Just like how Samuel relied on the wise Eli for guidance and direction, the elected officials of the United States government by design are required to rely on the citizens for wisdom and guidance as well. That's how they stay in touch with the country's needs. The citizens must speak up, telling our elected officials who usually live in their own bubble, people have to tell them the reality of what we're dealing with in our everyday lives. This is how we live. This is what we're seeing. This is what we are personally being forced to deal with day in and day out. In our democracy, I see the elected officials akin to the young Samuel who recognizes the authority, the reliability, and the insight of Eli. So just as Eli Eli allowed Samuel to guide him, our elected officials are supposed to be guided by us, the people. They're supposed to be listening and recognizing the authority, the reliability, and the insight of the people who they represent. Well, how's that working out for us? Yeah, far too many Americans feel like their voices are not being heard because our elected officials are simply not listening to us the way Samuel listened to Eli. Why? Well, because many of them, many of them are far too busy looking out after their own interests or by association, the interests of those who funded their election campaigns to begin with. Clearly, many elected officials either don't quite understand or don't care how badly the global pandemic and centuries of white supremacy have hurt the working class people in America. This past year, Americans have cried out for help. 40% of our population have had someone in their household who's lost a job or income in 2020. Two thirds of the American people have been crying out to their elective leaders that they haven't received enough help. But sadly, many of these leaders have not listened because they've been too busy making false claims about election fraud. And they were doing that in an effort to endear themselves to a president that's going to go down in history as the most destructive president and likely the most destructive person in U.S. history. Yes, thankfully, Congress did finally pass a new relief, relief act, but it was much smaller than the original CARES Act. The people in need had to wait seven months for it after the first one and Congress waited until the very last possible moment to approve it. And wow, at this point, thousands of Americans are facing homelessness because of the expiration of the eviction prohibition. In the era of Trump, the weakest of our representatives have been more loyal to their political party and they've ignored their oath of office to be loyal to the Constitution and the people of this country. And the net result has been pain and suffering carrying over into 2021, simply because many representatives are not listening to the needs of the people. We are a divided country. And in the context of today's reading, during the days of Eli and Samuel, Israel was not a unified country either. At that time, the tribes of Israel were fighting against one another because their leaders were corrupt and not reliable. They lost sight of their shared identity as the people of God. Looking closer to home and giving the, given the recent storming of the U.S. Capitol by armed insurrectionists, it's become apparent that not all of the U.S. leaders are reliable either. Our country is seeing the consequences of civil unrest and violence at the very center of our democracy. And it's heartbreaking. But when Samuel hears a voice 
that Eli never heard. Instead of ignoring Samuel or lying to him about the voice or doing something else that might derail Samuel's calling from God, Eli responds by offering support and guidance. And this decision on Eli's part changes the course of Samuel's life and the entire nation of Israel. Eli told him, if you hear the voice again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And that's what Samuel did. And the next words that God speaks to Samuel is a statement about what God promises to do. I'm about to do something that Israel will make. I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear tingle. This is a powerful statement. God makes it clear to Samuel that people will listen to him. Israel was changed forever. It makes for a great story. So let's recap. God calls out Samuel multiple times without a response. Why? Because Samuel didn't understand what was happening. So Eli offers wise counsel and guides Samuel and Samuel listens. If Eli had not cooperated, or if Samuel had not listened to Eli's advice, Samuel likely would not have responded to God and Israel's future would have been very different. Today, given the lack of response from many of our elected officials to the needs of their people throughout the pandemic, it's no wonder people are struggling so in our country. Without listening to the guidance of the people, how will they ever transition to policies that acknowledge the problems that our country has? Until then, Americans are left helpless and unable to do much of anything to move our country forward. We, the people, are in need of leaders and elected officials who are reliable, who are willing to help, who are willing to listen. Here in these United States, we have a long way to go. But the good news is God doesn't give up on people, even if the elected officials stop listening. There are still dedicated justice doers and seekers who follow in the footsteps of great leaders, like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., leaders who strive for goodness and mercy and righteousness in these United States every single day. This Sunday, we celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday and feel a sense of hope in our new administration an administration that will not be able to fix all our problems right away. We know that. We know it's not going to be perfect, but it is certainly going to move us back closer to the ideals the Founding Fathers laid out. Listening and responding is a blueprint for all of us, especially powerful when we're discerning God's calling in the context of community because that's how God changes the world, by bringing people together for work for those, to work for those who need the most support, the most vulnerable, and those being oppressed. And that's what we're called to do here at Edge Hill. It's to work together, to meet the needs of those who are the most vulnerable and being oppressed. I invite you to go in peace, listen, and respond just like Samuel did. And let's change this nation. Amen. Lord, 
take my hand Lead me on, let me stand I am tired, I am weak, I am worn Through the storm, through the night Lead me on to the Just lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone. Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past. Just Lord, lead me home. Take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me I invite you to join us now in a litany for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. In every era, God has chosen men and women to serve the needs of God's people. Such a servant was Martin Luther King Jr., whose birth we celebrate. We are deeply thankful for the life of this 20th century prophet. May the wisdom and words of Dr. Luther King Jr. rekindle our faith. May the deep love that Dr. King had for all people be released in us, that we too might work miracles in the lives of those who continue to hate. Dr. King taught that only love can overcome hatred, bitterness, and fear. May his struggle for social transformation continue in this generation. May all people come to believe that with perseverance we shall overcome. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness, like an ever-flowing stream. May the work of Dr. King continue to eradicate racial injustice and its ungodly consequences. Dr. King pursued his dream of racial equality by appealing to the conscience of his enemies. May we continue to cultivate the nonviolent discipline of Dr. King, abandoning unrestrained acts of force. He taught us that a heart full of grace and love is just as important as an education. May the spirit of Dr. King continue to flow through our daily living. He believed in self-respect and dignity, even though he knew that there would be difficult days ahead. 
May we have the courage of Dr. King as we continue to stand up for justice, reconciliation, and truth, despite challenge and controversy. Dr. King said that war is never victory, regardless of the outcome. May the peace of the risen Christ cause the fury of war to vanish from the face of the earth. Dr. King went to the mountaintop. He saw the promised land, and he reassured us that we would get there one day. God of glory, be with us on the journey. Hear this benediction, go into the world and listen carefully and be willing to share, guide and support one another. Listen and be present to God and respond with an overwhelming yes. Amen.